So the folks over at MaxMind provide GeoIP database and services. They are the leading IP intelligence company when it comes to geolocation information, as in knowing where an IP address lives. And this is actually an ever-changing landscape of uh, as we kind of reach a level of exhaustion with IPv4 addresses, they sometimes get bought and moved from their country where they were originally assigned and back into the pool and then assigned to a new country. MaxMind keeps up with all those changes so you don't have to because, well, there's a lot of IP addresses and they move around actually quite a bit. Uh, there's a lot of changes going on. They track all this. They keep this database up to date with a really... Uh, the most accurate database I'm aware of regarding that. But legal problems. Giving away data can get you in trouble. And significant changes to accessing using the GeoLite 2 databases, reasons for change. And they break down basically between uh, certain GDPR rules and the California Consumer Privacy Act uh, and the do not sell request. Giving this data away and creating GeoIP restrictions can cause some problems. They break down some of the legal ramifications of that. The solution to this problem is to have to register this. So, how does this affect PF Blocker? If you use GOIP functionality of PF Blocker NG, or if you use the IP reputation component of PF Blocker NG, or if you want to continue to see the country for IP block events in the reports tab, you must register for a free MaxMind account. So, it's not a move on their part to try to uh, monetize and charge for this data. They want to give it away, but now they have to give it away behind a registration due to the fact that, well, legal and lawyers and all that fun stuff. Now I'm not here, of course, to debate any of the legal ramifications of all these different privacy laws that were designed to protect consumers, but sometimes create inconveniences like this. I can tell you, though, that since this was posted uh, several, submitted three days ago, submitted two days ago, uh, the main developer, I'll leave links to all this, of the PF Blocker NG plugin has worked with the folks at PF Sense to get some updates pushed relatively fast so this problem can be solved. Now, this only affects you if you're using the GUIP database with your PF Blocker setup. Uh, does everyone use it? Not necessarily. Uh, I recommend using it if you are hosting something and you want a little bit, it, I say a little bit, this is not an end all the security, but it is one more layer. You can make sure you do things like block addresses from countries you don't want accessing your server. Sometimes this is done for GDPR laws where you say, I just want to block these countries and not have them access my server, or I have no business in those countries, so I don't mind if they can't. Or if you want to protect yourself from penguin hackers uh, in Antarctica, and you want to block all those, uh, you know, Antarctic IP addresses, then the IPB uh, for space and block them from getting to your servers. Now, granted, any uh, strong attack against your servers, they pivot from a country that you do allow. And at some point, you know, it doesn't, necessarily make you that much more secure, but it does quiet down the logs a little bit when you block out some of the countries and some of the bad reputation ones that are in this database. Now, as far as the other way it works is for outbound, someone will comment this. Yeah, I don't always recommend blocking outbound IP addresses of countries because if you're surfing the web, you'll find that websites sometimes have dependencies in other countries. So it, as long as you're willing to troubleshoot that, feel free to do it. Just throwing it out there. So if you are someone who uses it, what do you have to do? First, you go create a free account. Then go through PF Blocker. Now I have a whole in video on how to set up the uh, video on how to set up PF Blocker NG, the uh, development version. I did it not that long ago. Someone said in message me, Tom, your video is not relevant now. Yeah, it is. All you have to do, and we're going to show you real quick here. The only thing different between my video, the only thing that has really changed, so it was next or yesterday or through the wizard, and do the defaults. Finish. Pretty easy. Um, and before it's going to run, do the customization. Now we just have to get that license key. So it's gonna go ahead and pull this, but it's not going to pull the license key. So we'll go ahead and let it finish this real quick. All right, that part's done. Then we're gonna go over here to IP. And when you go follow the link and it's right here, all the details. First, you just go to sign up and create the database. Really simple. Uh, you do have to give them an email address. Phone is optional. Um, how do you hear? How do you plan to use the data? Let them know if you have blocker. If you'd like to give them statistics, you don't have to. Um, they do ask your intended use, so they're gathering a little bit of data there. Nothing really personal, other than your email address. And then you just paste in the license key. So MaxMind license key goes here. Um, that's pretty much it. it. It's not a really big deal. They even put the link to register here right in the functionality. So this is in order to download it. So not really that much challenging, uh, more of a challenge to set up. 
Now, the last couple things, and this is, let's say you have an already existing system and you want to check to see if it's uh, working and installed. No problem. This is my system. I already have it set up. It's already working. Uh, I'm not going to run the query again because you don't want to get, they'll rate limit you if you try to query this too many times. Uh, but just like it says here, if you want to list out this right here, LS, LAH, a user, local, shared, GOIP, you can see um, the data was in there. I ran the update. I left this uh, pulled up. PHP, user local PF blocker, NG, DC, pulls the latest list. And cool, now I have, as of December 31st, the most up-to-date list. Now, this is a couple days after December 31st, so it does have a December 31st date, even though today is January 5th. Um, so, yes, there, uh, there's a couple days behind. So, right here is this one is the GOIP Lite, but some of these other ones, it looks like we're updated on the 31st. Uh, even they mentioned they update it weekly. So you may have a couple different dates in here depending on when it was updated. But yes, uh, I've tested this on more than one system and we've been slowly rolling it out for clients that we have this set up with, logging in, setting it up, putting the query in, making sure it works because they already had it existing. Not a big deal. These uh, commands, exactly, you can copy and paste them in. They work perfectly fine for doing this and feel free to join the discussion. And I will also mention while I'm here, um, because I've done several videos on PF Blocker, uh, the developer, top notch, this change came very quickly. The developer also very quickly added the function to put the license and have it pull the license key in there. Uh, please go ahead and head over to the developer's patron site, which of which you can find a link right here, which uh, contact and GitHub and Twitter Please do some supporting of PF Blocker if this is something used. I am a donor of this project and a big supporter of PF Blocker uh, because it's such a great add-on for PF Sense. And you know, this is a uh, not the main job that BBCan 177 has for doing this. But like I said, PF Blocker is a great project. If you can afford to donate, please donate to PF Blocker. So I'll leave you guys with that. I'll leave you with all the links to where you can read more about this. But it's really not as big of a deal. Uh, my video is still relevant because it's using, there's not many other significant changes other than we now have a MaxMind GOIP configuration where we drop a license key in. And once you drop it in, you actually get some query reports. And I'll pull this over here real quick. Uh, look, on January 5th, I downloaded uh, twice on two different systems I have sitting here. And then I can, which license keys? Well, this particular one, one's from LTS, one's for LTS Office, one's a demo one, one's the Office server. Um, cool. It's all working. You can even get usage reports now inside of here. All right, I'll leave links to all the stuff in the description below, and thanks. And thank you for making it to the end of the video. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you'd like to see more content from the channel, hit the subscribe button and hit the bell icon if you like YouTube to notify you when new videos come out. If you'd like to hire us, head over to lawrencesystems.com, fill out our contact page, and let us know what we can help you with and what projects you'd like us to work together on. If you want to carry on the discussion, head over to forums.lawrencesystems.com where we can carry on the discussion about this video, other videos, or other tech topics in general, even suggestions for new videos. They're accepted right there on our forums, which are free. Also, if you'd like to help the channel out in other ways, head over to our affiliate page. We have a lot of great tech offers for you. And once again, thanks for watching and see you next time.